Hello and welcome to the 23rd edition of Film Revision. I am pulsating with excitement as we move ever so closer to the end of our journey of discussing 25 films from 25 years ago. I have a feeling that today's installment is going to be one of our more successful episodes, simply because Star Wars continues to be such a large part of our generation's shared mythology. It therefore won't surprise you to learn that today's film for discussion, Return of the Jedi, was the highest grossing film of 1983 by far, more than tripling the box office intake of the number two film, Flashdance, and it currently stands at number 27 on the all-time highest grossing films list. Now, for our final few episodes, we wanted to do a few things different. Normally, I have one male guest and one female guest to discuss each film with me. Uh, but today, we have two lovely young ladies with us, starting with Anne Woodward, an account director at an advertising firm originally from Statesboro, Georgia, and Jessica Stone, one of our stars from our upcoming web serial, Intersection, um, and she currently resides in Hoboken, New Jersey. Jessica. Yes, Jonathan. You're up first. I was actually completely amazed at how much of this I didn't remember. So it was actually kind of really fun to get to watch something that you know and something that's familiar, but completely differently. I can't even tell you if I've ever seen it really in my adult life. It was sort of like a little nostalgic. And I heard a very disturbing thing. I don't know if it's true. What'd you hear? I, I heard that you had never seen any of the Star Wars movies. That is true until I saw this film. Which is the final installment. So are you, were you confused? No, I wasn't confused. I mean, I feel that Star Wars does have a place in pop culture, so Darth Vader, the dark side, all of these things, you know, were kind of pervasive, so you knew what was going to happen, or to some degree, like you at least were familiar with the characters. So, but it was exciting to watch for the, the first time. What would you say were the themes of Return of the Jedi? I'd say redemption. The whole storyline with Darth Vader sort of speaks for itself. It was a lot more emotion than I expected. Some some family themes, you know, basically, I mean, that's, that's literal, but, you know, kind of like passing of torch, things of that nature. I mean, the father-son dynamic is mostly explored in this film. It's not a big part of the other films. And, and there's something unique about Return of the Jedi, I think. It is a lot more emotional. Um, and, and the big theme for me was uh, the good and evil in all of us. Uh, which I guess is you know, tangentially tied to your redemption sure. in terms of Darth Vader coming out on the other side of that. The most effective scene to me is that in the Emperor's Lair, a tug of war over essentially Luke Skywalker's soul. And I was amazed in essentially a fantasy film how like, emotionally engaging that was. That was like, effective. I didn't remember that much depth. Right. I think it's just interesting going back and seeing a film from 25 years ago and how sort of elemental it feels comparatively. I mean... It's not the Matrix. There were a few times that I was sort of like, okay, we get it, you know. Well, you don't I, have I to mean, for me, the, the Ewoks are a big example of a bad choice. Like, just the inclusion <laughs> of the Ewoks in general. No, and, and seriously, because uh, I mean, to me, that's a, that's a business choice. That was like, totally for the girls. I don't think. I think it was, it was for the girls. <laughs> I think it was to sell toys. And they're such a minor part of the trilogy. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're an annoying part of the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> what I think is interesting about the the special effects, or the you know, or, or that all those technical things that you're talking about in referencing the Matrix. Um, I feel like a lot of what they were doing is stronger than a lot of what they do now. Yeah, I mean, it's very revolutionary. It seemed to be very revolutionary for its time because I have to deal with a fair amount of post-production in my job with commercials and things like that. And you know, to think that they were doing that level of special effects yeah. 25 years ago is actually really interesting and incredible. They want to play with their computers in these special effects, but I mean, to me, the models work so much better. Like, there's something, there's, they're tangible. I mean, I feel like when you watch a lot of these computer-generated special effects, it's like cartoony and, and mm -hmm. there's a detachment, but yet, you know, there's, you feel like there's real danger when there's this huge AT-AT walker rocking at you. I mean, it's probably more expensive. I feel like it's, it's more effective and, and we totally, totally got away with that. And George Lucas is, is probably one of the worst offenders now. What do you guys think of the performances? I personally found some of them to be a little rough to watch. You know, it seemed to, some of the dialogue and just the performances seemed somewhat forced and cheesy. I mean, and while they were dealing with emotional subject matter, it just seemed like they were delivering lines that were just really trite. And so, or sometimes it was like... Dialogue's, you know, always you know. bad. And, and granted, I don't know if it was like just because of a 1980s thing, but I mean, it was just kind no, of seemed particularly Lucas, rough. So Lu right. Lucas is, has a problem with it, like yeah. a real, real problem. I mean, you know, he's a special effects guy or whatever. He has, he has the vision, not necessarily the dialogue. I think it was incredibly well cast. I think Hamill has grown tremendously by the time of Return of the Jedi. But are you comparing him to acting in general? Out of the three in this movie, in out things? of the three of those stars in this movie, he's the best. I, I don't know if I'm bringing my own prejudice to that. I love Han. Harrison Ford is the best actor of the three, like, in terms so, of overall talent. Are we talking about actor or are we talking about role? I'm talking about this film. Hamill is challenged 
with this like you know good and evil thing with this emperor scene and i'm feeling like he's he's delivering that whiny kid from star wars is gone comparing mark hamill to luke that we saw in star wars and luke that we saw in Empire Strikes Back. He was incredible. It's like watching little Harry Potter grow up or something. It, it, it reminded know. me of Harry Potter growing but, up. Danny Radcliffe is a better actor. I'm not going <laughs> to deny you that. I don't want to see Mark Hamill naked. In Equus? <laughs> I think Fisher's got awful in this movie. I, and she, uh, quite frankly, knowing her history, she looks high to me. She looks lost most of the time. I just didn't know what her role had been in the previous movies because when like Jabba the Hutt, like she's you know semi naked and probably like ninety pounds, which you know whatever. She looks good there. So yeah, so it's like you know, but she's like Scarlet. She you know, she's the love interest. But then again, like, she was also able to wield a weapon and drive the little. In the first two films, she's so I mean, I just didn't know if like she's you know, very she powerful roles, in the first yeah. two films. She's and she's more present. Like I don't know if like she was written out or, or what they're dealing with, but I remember like there's a scene on, on the bridge when she learns that you know she's. Luke Skywalker's sister and Darth Vader's her father. That scene needed to be better. Yeah. Very, very and There was bizarre. a hold me line in there too, which I kind of disliked. <laughs> that, that to me is, is writing. Like, I get it. And the writing is, is problematic. But I mean, like, I'm even talking about the moments in between the words. Right. You know, I'm talking about like even close ups that she has. Very Doesn't, surface, very Yeah, surface. yeah, yeah. I didn't rate her performance as much as I did the role, her role in this film. I, I think it was altered. Judging from the way she was acting in this film, like I feel like she must have been sidelined to some degree, especially given the first two films. It's time for closing thoughts. I think I give the film a seven. Okay. You know, I thought it was really enjoyable. It was engaging, entertaining. Um, and then, you know, looking back, I just, I still feel like the effects and everything, you know, held up really well today. I think I'm going to go to like an eight, somewhere 8.3. Just, to make it my own. just wow. because Russians. I think I think you have to give you have to give props to a film that 25 years later these films have held their own and there's just not a lot in this world that you can say that about so I think even if it's not something tangible even if I can't sit here and put my finger on well this is why and this is the this the, is the shot making you feel like a kid again is, is a big deal yeah I think it's just a strong film I mean you know yeah we can we can knock the dialogue here and there and we can knock some of the acting there's a lot of elements that. that Counterbalance that. But there are, exactly, it just feels like something present. I give the film a nine, um, although I would say that uh, if I had to rank the six Star Wars films, I would put Return of the Jedi second behind The Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi is really, really good. The way that information is doled out, the editing, the pace, the score, all these elements, even over and above the special effects, which are nice, even just the basic filmmaking elements are all there. They're telling a really exciting story. Mm -hmm. And you know, with, with themes that, that are resonant and, and universal, and it's a very, very satisfying, mm -hmm. satisfying ending. I wanna say thank you to Anne and Jessica for coming out to talk about Return of the Jedi. The big question is, will Return of the Jedi make my list of the top five films of 1983? Well, you'll be able to find out very soon when we bring you our year in review finale, where we're going to bring back the guests that you chose with your views and your votes on YouTube as your favorites. The best of 1983 coming to YouTube on New Year's Day, so keep an eye out for it. This week on Saturday, December the 13th, Real 13 features one of the most beloved films of all time, but also a film that I loathe and think is highly overrated. The film is West Side Story, um, and you can decide for yourself what you think of it, um, which of course features Natalie Wood as the Maria, though she's dubbed. After you're rolling your eyes from the conclusion of West Side Story, stay tuned for the short that you will have chosen on real13.org. And then the indie is Falling Angels, which has been described as Little Women on Acid, which alone might make it worth a look-see. It features Miranda Richardson in her third Real 13 indie and is about three dysfunctional sisters against the backdrop of the tumultuous late 60s. As always, the whole evening starts at 9 p.m. That's this Saturday, December the 13th, only on Channel 13 WNET in New York City. We'll be back next week with a discussion of a biopic about the first female drag racer. The film is called Heart Like a Wheel and stars Bonnie Bedelia. That's next time on Film Revision. We'll see you then.